Today we will be showcasing how to make these leaded glass windows. I will actually be giving away both of these panels shipped to your door, so be sure to stay until the end to find out how you can be considered for the giveaway. For a beginner project like this, it's good to select a glass that is clear. These glasses can be beautiful, quirky, organic, traditional, or modern, and a combination of them can make a very nice and timeless piece. These clear textures tend to be less costly versus colored glasses, so that can be helpful for a beginner too. For this window, we took a look at tons of different textured glasses. Some are wavy, some have little designs on them, some have directional textures while others are random. And the combinations are really endless, but in the end, we are going to be going with the rain clear option. Picking glass is one of my favorite parts of the project, and it always puts a little smile on my face. So let's get it pulled. If you'd like to get your hands on any of the glass or tools in this video, you can visit our online store. Link is in the description. For this design, I am preparing the pattern in a free software called paint.net. I create a new file with the canvas size, the size of my pattern. We'll do a rectangle to outline the perimeter, center lines vertically and horizontally, then a four and a half inch diameter circle lined up right in the center. After it's done, we'll print it out on two 11 by 17 inch pieces of paper and tape them together to get our pattern. We'll begin by marking the direction on our glass. For a simple glass texture like this, it's not as critical to do this because it is very obvious. But for more discrete directional textures, this can be a good practice to employ to help make sure all your cuts are orienting the glass in the correct direction. Especially if you are using the direction to emulate an effect like water flowing in a river in a certain direction. Before we start cutting, I like to make sure to check the measurements. In this case, the design is symmetrical, so I can cut all the pieces to the same width and height, and then cut out the circular part in the center. I start by making marks with the sharpie, lining up the straight edges and scoring the glass. With light pressure applied on the sides of the glass, I separate the pieces. With the first piece cut, I set it on the pattern and make sure it fits well. A little bit of careful freehand cutting around the arch of the circle, just inside of the line, and some taps with my glass cutter, and voila, the first piece is complete. We'll repeat the process for the remaining pieces, marking, scoring, and breaking. This video is not an in-depth guide on cutting glass, but if you are interested in watching that type of video, check the description for a link to a video I made explaining everything you need to know about cutting glass, including tools, techniques, and more. While you are down there, consider subscribing if you enjoy watching this type of leaded glass window content. We have many beautiful stained glass window projects coming up that you will certainly not want to miss. Now, you may have noticed I did start bleeding on my right hand ring finger. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but a little bit of masking tape normally does the job. This is going to be something that you'll run into quite frequently. So it would probably be a better idea to keep a band-aid box close by so you can handle that situation quickly without bleeding all over your glass. Now, we are finishing up these last few pieces along the perimeter and then we will be tackling the circle. For a beginner, this will be the most challenging part and it may take a few tries to get it right. First thing, we will mark out a piece that will be big enough to encompass the circle within it. Once we have that piece, we'll have enough glass for a few tries to get it right. On this piece, I started by trying to score the entire circle in one piece without breaking off pieces as I score them. And I thought it would come out pretty much perfectly the first try. With a little bit of tapping, you'll see that I did end up breaking it. Not a big deal, that's why it can be a good idea to cut a piece that will give you a few tries. The other big takeaway from that is to break off pieces of the glass as you score it. Whenever you're cutting close to the edge, it's also handy to use your grosures to break off small pieces instead of trying to tap the break through the glass. For the lead to set properly and nicely on the glass, especially on curved pieces, it's important to cut very precisely and to remove any burrs or fractured edges that may prohibit the lead from setting properly on the glass. You need a nice flat edge so the lead has a nice curve around the glass instead of sharp edges or dimples. You can do this by using the grosures to remove the majority of the jagged edges. Make sure to keep your table brush handy to sweep all the debris off or you'll end up cutting yourself and probably scratching your glass. You could also do this over a trash can, probably a much better idea. Another option is to use a grinder to clean up those edges. Here we use our safety squints. I'm just kidding. Definitely use eye protection anytime you're grinding glass. Now that our edges are cleaned up, we are ready to grab our lead. For this project, we will be using a quarter inch round H lead in the area and the half inch flat H for the perimeter. It's important to always stretch your lead to ensure that there are no kinks and bows in it. 
I knew all those elementary school years playing tug of war would eventually pay off. Now with all our lead pulled, it's time for my favorite part, the lead assembly. This is not an in-depth guide on how to lead windows, but if you are interested in that video, check the description for a link to a guide I've made reviewing everything there is to know about leading windows. First thing we will do is secure our pattern to the table. First, tape on the edges, then nailing down some forms. It's important to take note of the direction of your pieces. We'll start in the corner with a half inch lead against the forms and forcing our first piece into the channel. We'll fill the area of the panel with the quarter inch H lead and make our marks with the lead knife. When making your mark, you have to leave half of the width of the channel to allow for the adjacent piece. You can normally estimate it pretty closely, or you can use a scrap piece to show exactly where to mark. Now here you can see that the center piece is very far off from where it needs to be facing. It's very obvious, so be sure to fix something like that before continuing. And from here, it's pretty much smooth sailing. We are just repeating the process until we get the rest of the glass assembled into the window. A few taps from the rubber side of our mallet is all you need to tighten up all the glass and ensure that the final product is the correct size. Sometimes I'll use a piece of scrap wood or even a piece of scrap glass that fits in the channel. Once the panel is ready, I'll begin wire brushing all the joints. And you'll know you are doing the job when the material has brush marks. This area is nice and clean and ready to receive flux and solder. Normally I'll apply a small amount of flux to each joint and that's really all you need. Here we are using a paste flux. To solder the windows, all you need is a nice hot iron, and we normally use 50-50 solder for the lead windows. This iron is pretty good and only requires about a half to a full second per joint to melt it. It's important not to leave the iron on the lead too long because it can melt and damage it. I like this little fume extractor, especially for small projects like this. Anyone that is doing this type of work, especially in your home or garage, you should consider purchasing a machine like this. Also, be sure to always wear a mask to avoid breathing in the fumes. Once the first side is done, flip it over and repeat. This little panel doesn't have many joints, so it's great for a beginner to not have to invest tons of time into a single project. I have a link in the description to another one of those in-depth tutorials, this one on how to solder stained glass featuring techniques, tools, materials, and all the products needed to do a fantastic job. The last and messiest step, yes, applying stained glass putty. We use the whiting and sawdust mixture after applying the stained glass putty to absorb all the leftover oils and putty. A very simple yet laborious process. We use a soft brush to scoop the material and force it into the channel between the glass and the lead. This step adds tons of strength to the windows and gives them a nice finished polished look. While I'm finishing up this window, I think it would be a good time to let you know how you can be entered to win the giveaway. To be entered for a chance to win, you must be subscribed to the channel. You must comment on the video, you must like the video, and you must share this video at least one time. Two windows will be awarded at random. The prizes of this contest are these two lead glass panels. The contest opening date is today's date, the release of this video. The contest will close 30 days after release of this video. There will be a video posted showing the usernames of the two winners. If you are selected, you will need to email me at the email in the description. This contest is not sponsored by YouTube, and we are responsible for both the contest and the distribution of the prices. This contest is for people that are located within the continental United States only. You must be 18 years or older to enter. No duplicate entries will be counted. Any details to the contest I may have missed in this video will be added to the video description below. Check the description to recap any instructions heard in the video and for any potential clarifications. Good luck!